Hello, 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 friends. How are you today? It is Sunday, January 10th, 2021. And I hope you're having a great day. I'm going to wait just a second for some people to pop on because I think you're just now going to start getting notifications. And during that time, I am going to check on Facebook and see, make sure I'm here. How does that sound? Okay, here we go. I thought I had this pulled up. So, hi there, friends. How are you? Um, okay, so if you make a comment, let's see if somebody would make a comment. Can you hear me? That would be super helpful to know. Hi there, Christy. It's nice to see you. Thank you so much for letting me know. I'm going to adjust this just for a second so I can actually see my own screen. So I normally have my awesome marketing intern with me to help out and, and assist. She graduated from college. Hi there. How are you? And so I am flying solo today. So I'm really glad you can hear me because these are some of the things that she and I normally will test on our own, you know, before I jump on here. And so me myself and I and my dog was is really sweet but he was not very helpful when I was trying to test things out so give me a second I'm going to open up Facebook land myself here I'm using a third-party app called StreamYard and so let's see what I'm trying to make sure I can do is see your comments um if anybody let's see so far I can see people's comments so yay this is a great thing all right I am getting set up. Put my iPad right over here. Okay. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Chris Andale, and I am the founder of the Yard Card Business Network. I have been in the industry for 21 years, y'all. It's been a long time. I've been doing this when we only had traditional marketing, and I'm talking yellow pages. If you are old enough, you know what yellow pages are and you know that that was one of the best ways you could advertise. We had direct sales. We would literally go uh, direct marketing. I used to mail postcards to potential customers. And I mean, there's just I go way back pre social media, y'all. And certainly pre all of this really beautiful digitally printed signs uh, we used to make our own i mean and i know we can still do that but technology has really up leveled us in so many ways and it continues to do so shoot we didn't have the same options three years ago that we do now two years ago every year um things up level there's also new challenges that come with that and i can tell you things were way simpler back you know pre-social media in a way, but we certainly have a lot more connection now, not only as people, but also as business owners. And certainly our global pandemic has taught us that. That being said, prior to March 2020, we were in a very stereotypical business owner situation where people didn't know what our businesses were. What is this yard card business industry? And Literally a year ago, I wrote a guide and did a training on five simple steps to grow your business in 30 days. Here's some ways to go and earn some income in 30 days. And then poof, we had this ginormous pandemic and things have really just gone wild in so many ways. If you are on this, um, I want you to just go ahead and tell me, okay, I was a yellow page advertising salesperson. Oh my gosh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, oh my gosh, I know. I was always like, can I get that one ad? I want the tiniest ad possible because it cost a fortune. And way back in the day, we did not, it, our business name mattered. We wanted to be, to be on, you know, the lower end, of the higher end of the alphabet. We did not want to be a Y or a Z. So it's, it's so funny, the things, and, and they have stuck with me, interestingly enough. And I'm guessing that now that's obsolete. I'm pretty sure it is, but that's how we're dating ourselves, right? Okay, if you're on this, I would love you to do me the pleasure of letting me know how long have you been in business? 
I know some of you have been on been in the business pre pandemic, I guess that's a PP pre pandemic. Others have been in business for about a, um, a year or so. Um, others, it was all during the pandemic. And some of us go back 5, 10, 15, dare I even say 20 years. Some of my closest business friends have done this. We've been together for over 15 years. I'm talking before Facebook, uh, before social media. We had an online forum and this was exciting because we didn't have any connection. It was, if, I mean, the internet was was still around, but it, it's just been it's just been crazy. Okay, the end of September, Samantha. Great. Hi, and, and welcome, Samantha. It's nice to see you here. August 2020. Okay. La Hi, Brandy. Yay, fellow Texan. Brandy, tell me how your weather is there. Because I can tell you, just north of here, not even maybe an hour away, it's snowing. Now, I don't mean like northern states snowing. I mean like enough that us Texans get just excited, just, just, you know, this much. It's not enough for us to go build snowmen. I say us, I've got dreary rain instead. Okay, let's see. August. Hi, Carrie. I see you there. Hello, sweet friend. Okay. Hi, Tanya. July. Uh, is it Tanya or Tanya? And I apologize if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but my first instinct is Tanya. And let's see, Brandy. Oh my gosh, it just started snowing. Wow. And Andrea, hello, friend. Hello, hello. I've got some of my super special paid members that are popping on because we're all always still learning. And I keep throwing assignments at them and they're gobbling it up and they're still learning, y'all. So I just wanted to point that out. Let's see. Yeah, I know, Carrie. It's don't worry. It's not snowing where I am because that would be kind of exciting. Instead, we have really crappy rain and 20 plus mile an hour winds. And of course, here's me with a stork out going, oh, I hope my stork's OK. Anyway. All right. Th these are these are the things that never go away in 21 years. We still have these things. OK, so, Christy, you've been doing storks for 13 years and just expanded. I got to tell you, I'm going back to basics for some of this because storks are my love. That's where I first started. And right now we're going to have a baby boom. We're actually starting to already have it. And it's just exciting. But I started expanding because I had all of these requests and there's only so many babies. And then, you know, it's been really nice to be able to have more of an offering. So I think if you go into it um, cautiously, Christy, because you know me, I'm all I'm all about let's spend our money wisely because as we will as we will get to it here in just a second, we're here to talk about how to be more successful in 2021. Um, let's see. Okay, hold on one second. Andrea, you started in 2013. And then I know that it's been so crazy because we've known each other for all this time, right? And then Andrea, she had her stuff. She was, ret I'll call you retired if that's okay. And your business was retired. And then boom, this pandemic happened. And it was like, you couldn't not restart your business, right? It's just, it's been crazy. So y'all, if you haven't been doing this for a long time, you can see things cycle and you just never know where you're going to be. Andrea, a year ago, you were trying, not even a year ago, you were trying to sell your inventory. I actually saw a, an old post about that because you were retired from it. And you know, this stuff is not so easy. And then look where you are. Isn't this amazing to see where you were and where you are now? So I'm, I, as you know, I'm really excited that you are back in business. And of course, one of my beloved paid members, I think you have been in the business the longest out of all my paid members. I'll, I'll have to go back and look. But anyway, okay, we are going to get into this. I really, oh, you know what? Okay, almost going to get into it. Will you all tell me where you're located? I think a couple of you do. Yes, Carrie, I know where you are, but everybody else doesn't know. Let's see here. Yes, we know Brandy, you're an, uh, my other Texan, Flower Mound. Let's see, but everybody else, would y'all let me know where you all are? Okay, Andrea, yeah, I know you're from Kansas City. Hello, sweet friend Dawn. I see you there, my sweet New Yorker friend. All right. I'm just kind of trying to scroll through here. I'm going to check my technology while y'all type that in. 
it's so weird not having my assistant here. She was just an awesome marketing intern. I highly recommend Marlene. Hi there. It's nice to see you. I, I just, I love Baton Rouge and I actually drove through there about a month ago and I wish I would have had more time and I could have gotten and gone and eaten some, some good food. Okay. And then Christy, okay. I did not realize you were out in Naperville. Interesting. Okay. I need to remember that because we actually had somebody looking for a referral and I'm not sure if it was exactly that area, but whenever we see, I'll call it Chicago land. We're always like, oh, you know, we'll just ask our Chicago people. So I need to remember that. All right. Um, I'm going to get going here because I want you, I want to be able to make the most out of your time and my time, right? So I appreciate you all taking the time here on a Sunday to hear, uh, to have you here. Would love to hear about our advertisers and any sales. All right. We're going to do that separately, Brandy, because I tell you what, we could be on here all day long. I'll, I'll uh, list out those at the end. Will you remind me? And and that way, because we have some special advertising partners. I'm not, I you know, I should do a, I should do um, a video about that at some point. And then I would like to bring some of them on. And I've been working on that. So in the meantime, we're going to get started in how to make 2020 more successful for you. Now, we are at January 10th, 2021. And I hope nobody gets caught up in, oh my gosh, we've already been in January for 10 days and I'll, I don't have this big action plan in place and I don't you know, have all my goals written out. That's okay because it's only January 10th and you can, you can, you know, you can create your goals and you can move forward every single day. It could be August 12th. doesn't matter. Every day is the perfect day to get up and work on your success. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever heard the phrase to work on your business versus work in your business? Do you know the difference in those? When you're working in your business, that is our everyday, day to day tasks. I call it putting out the fires because most of the time that's what we're doing, right? It's okay. I got to get ready for this order. Or better yet, I'm doing customer service and working with my customers, getting them all situated. And customer service is super, super important. Um, there should be some sort of touch point with your customers because then you're not just, they're not just a transaction. You're not just one of those companies over there. You want them to remember you. So that one is working on and in your business because you're also developing more of a relationship with them. But most of the time it's preparing orders, um, making sure you get payments for your customers, right? And actually physically getting the signs together and getting them prepped and delivered and set up. And then you return and then you do it all over again. And then you go back and pick everything up again. So that and then, you know, there's just tell me what are some of your day to day activities in your business? because I bet I just missed some of those, but that's pretty much my, my top level of what my life is like. And of course that sounds so simple. There's always, you know, this hiccup and that hiccup and it's never a dull day is what I like to say. Um, but now when you're working on your business, that's talking about up leveling your business and growing your business. And you've got to be growing your business or it's going to be stagnant. And when something is stagnant, it actually starts deteriorating and going down. I, I, I have, sorry, I use my hands a lot, just so you know, for y'all who have not been with me, I use my hands a lot. So I need to remember that, that here I am. Marlene, cleaning inventory. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I know there's always inventory to clean and to sort. So yeah, that's a, that's another really popular one we all have to do. So when you're working on your business, what are some examples that you can think of, of a good working on your business activity? Carrie, Andrea, Brandy, you all have been with me. Let's see who else do I have on here. Y'all have been with me for a while and, and you know how I am. I'll, I'll call y'all out. <laughs> be like, come on. 
it's it's what I do. When y'all get to know me, um, I'll try not to scare you here. But oh, and Don, there you are. Yes, um, I do. I start I start picking on people and putting you on the spot. So it's just it's sort of it's sort of what I do. Advertising, advertising, advertising. Yes. OK, so that is one of the biggest and that's going to segue for us. Hold on a second. I got it. I get nervous. y'all. For those of you who do not know me, I am very awkward and uncomfortable in front of a camera. I prefer to be the behind the scenes person. So what I figured out a while back is that when I'm behind the scenes and I am not in front of people, it's harder for me to teach and serve you. And so I had to stop being selfish and I figured out it's exactly what it was. I was being selfish because I was caught up in my fear of being judged by people. If you really want to know, that's what it always is with any of us in our fears. And I had to decide I wanted to help and serve. So here I am in my awkwardness in my crazy office in front of a camera talking to you all. So I am so grateful you all are actually here and talking with me because it's really weird when there's nobody giving me any, any interaction and, and I'm talking literally to my cam to my camera, right? Okay, so this does segue into, I'm getting down to it, I'm getting my notes, y'all. I got them written up here for us. Here is the number one question that I am asked that everybody thinks of. What is the best way to earn more income? I'm going to bet since you are a business owner, that is a top question for you. And what I want to say about that is that is the top question for every business since the beginning of time. And when I say that, when you think of all of the activities that you might have specific struggles and challenges with and questions, if you reverse engineer it, what you're really, what your objective is, is to earn more income. Give me a one or a yes if that is true for you. Are you here to earn more income or are you here because you truly, the money isn't the reason you're just uh, doing it because you enjoy doing it and it's, it doesn't matter about earning any income. I would love to know that 99% of the people that I talk with. In fact, I think I would say 99.5. It is truly for the income. It is not a philanthropic philanthropic endeavor. Although we love what we do, we are also trying to earn income. So I don't want anybody. Okay, good. I see, I see a bunch of ones and yes is coming through. This is so great, y'all. I'm glad to know. I have actually run into people that it really isn't for that. And so I don't want to, you know, polarize anybody that's in that category. So I know we are all on the same page about this, right? We're here to earn an income. Everything else from that, we we reverse engineer it, right? So that's the top. I'm sorry, I'm doing like high level visual arts here. Um, right here is you want to earn more income, right? Okay, sorry. I, I should have some visual props. Everything else is down here. All of those questions. So the top objective, okay, I'm looking at my camera trying to do this right. Your top objective here is to earn more income. Let's not lose sight of that when we are doing other activities. If you think about your revenue generating activities versus your busy activities, you might see what you're doing. Um, you've got more time that you're spending on busy work versus on revenue generating activities. I hope that makes sense. So, okay. So we are going to get into that. Um, I am going to try to share my screen. Normally my marketing intern helps me with this. I am getting better with the tech. 
Although sometimes, let's just face it, we can still have issues. So hold on one second. Okay, full screen. Give me just a second, y'all. I'm waiting to see if this catches up. There's a little bit of a lag. Okay, great. I'm hoping y'all can see this. Give me just a second to get over here. Okay, we're going to actually go through. I made just a couple of slides just because I wanted to make sure that we do that, that we have something to actually look at here. Okay, side note, um, all of my paid members that are here, I want to just point out a few tweaks I made to our logo and our branding. What do you think of our pink and blue and yes, flamingos? For anybody that doesn't know me, my local business is Flamingos To Go. And flamingos have been part of my life and business life for 20 years, 21 years, actually. And it's been really fun. And, you know, I wanted to move forward, but we still have what now have been called, you know, flockers versus yard card business owners. Well, I don't think there's a separation. I don't like separation in our industry. But either way, any of us who offer flamingos, a lot of us are old school, I decided we need to be represented so we have some flamingos. So I hope you like it and look at those colors. Okay, we're going to get this going. So like I said, this is the number one question is how to earn more income. So that's the overarching theme of why we're in business. So. I can't just do tip number one. Here's how to earn more income because that's the that's the reason businesses are always growing and working and doing so many other things. So we are going to talk about some specific strategies and one of them might actually surprise you. And so it'll be it'll be interesting to see what you think of that. But then we're also going to talk about accounting and bookkeeping. And then another question that comes up a lot, and, and I get a lot of questions. I had a hard time deciding on three to talk about, but then the third one is going to be how to juggle business with a full-time job. Now, you can erase full-time job and put full-time homeschool mom, um, full-time stay-at-home mom, full-time whatever else it is. So shoot, just juggling a job with anything is a challenge. So this is what we're going to talk about. Okay. Do y'all want me to keep this on screen or do you want me to come back? I'm going to just keep this on screen for a little bit here. Okay, here we go. How to earn more income. Easy, right? <laughs> no, I had to put this up as, as tip number one because there's just so much we can do with that. But here's two of the top line things I want you to do. You just need to make the most of the revenue you're currently making. This is one of the best things you can do that most entrepreneurs are not really looking at on the deeper level. That doesn't cost you any money to do either. The other thing to do is to go out and look at what your average ticket order is and then simply upsell to your customers. Again, that doesn't cost you any other money. Both of these things can help you earn more income without spending another dime. Does that sound crazy? Because I know it can. I know it can sound crazy. Um, yeah, it's one of those things. Okay, so... I can't see comments at this point, and I don't know if you can or not, but I'm going to keep going because I want to expand on that. So what's the best way to make the most of the revenue you're currently making? It's really simple. Stop spending more money. Let me say that again. Stop spending more money. I have never seen so much inventory, beautiful designs available ever, ever, ever in the history of our industry. 
than we have had in the last six months. And it's gorgeous. And we have just anything and everything that we didn't even ever think of or know we needed or wanted at our fingertips and some great vendors with some great, some of them have really, really, really great prices. Some of the quality is okay. Some of it's great. Some of it's not so great. Either way, we are all so enticed to buy more inventory, more inventory, more inventory. If you stopped buying inventory today, and you continue to make the same amount of revenue and you just cut that simple expense, guess what? You're going to earn more income because it's not about your gross sales, right? Do we all know what gross sales are? I just want to make sure. So whatever your gross revenue is, that means all of the money people have paid you. That's your gross revenue. Now, that's not the money in your pocket, right? Because you've still got business expenses. Whatever those business expenses are, inventory is in that category. You have your money in. That's the money that your customers pay you. You've got your money out. What are you spending money on? When you have less money going out, you just gave yourself more income. I hope that makes sense because... It's the simplest and quickest way to give yourself more income. Okay, number two. Oh, side note, before I go to number two, that will upset some people. And I do recognize that. And it is it is what it is. Go talk to any successful entrepreneur, truly successful business and they're going to tell you the same thing to stop spending so much money unless it's making you a lot of money. And right now it's the best way you can earn more income. Okay. Next up, know your average ticket north or know your average ticket amount. So if you haven't done this already, I challenge you to go and tally up your 2020 sales and then tally up how many orders you had. This doesn't matter um, if you had 500 orders or five orders. It's all about, right, your income at the end of the day, how to earn more income. So take your total sales, take your total number of orders. These are paid orders, y'all, paid orders, and divide that. You're going to come up with a number, and if you've got I don't do math well on the spot. If you've got a hundred thousand dollars, let's see, I should give a simple amount, right? If you've got a hundred thousand dollars and then you had 1000 orders, your average ticket price is $100. Now I know those are funky numbers. I just threw out, but you know what I mean? So you're going to take your gross sales. You're going to divvy it up with, how many orders you have, and that's your average ticket number. And most people, when they do this, they are surprised to see what that number is. And because most people will tell you, oh, it depends if I go in this area and that area, we've got mileage, blah, 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 blah. No, everybody has an average ticket order. I want you to go and find out what that is. And then figure out a way with everything you have, your inventory in stock with your time, with your packages to upsell your customers. This could be a simple $10 upsell option. Because if you then added on $10 to that average ticket order, you're going to have a higher amount of income coming in, right? Okay. One other thing I did not list on here that I should have is making it available for your customers to add on a gratuity. Make it available for them to tip you. If you do not make it available to them, guess what? You won't get any tips. If you do make it available, guess what? You might get some tips. And more likely than not, you will get some tips. And you're not doing anything differently. It's not costing you anything extra. 
and you're generating more revenue, right? Okay, so I don't have that one listed. So you might want to write that one down if you don't. There are specific um, credit card processors that will allow you to do that, others that don't. And that's some stuff we can talk about later. And paid members, I promise you, um, we have this over and I'm making up a new post over in the member portal for you. And so if you are looking at it, if you don't already have a, t a tipping option, I'll go ahead and put some links over in the member portal for you. And that way you can consider whether you might want to switch over to a credit card processing company that will let you have tips because it is one of the easiest ways to earn more income. All right. Now we're going to kind of go, okay, I couldn't call this tip number two because it's still about, right, how to earn income is creating a marketing strategy. This is one of the most important things you can do to start creating a more successful business. And we're in January 2021. What I really recommend to do is work in 90 day cycles and work on, you know, quarter to quarter to quarter. You can still and should still have an overall goal. What is your number that you, okay, I want you to take just a second. I want you to close your eyes if you can. You don't really have to, especially if you're driving. Please don't. Think about December 31st, 2021, New Year's Eve. What do you want to look back at and be thrilled with what you've done with your business? How much income will you have earned when you're looking back on that night? What's that special number? What's that number that would make you just be so proud of yourself and just really ready to celebrate your success? And this is your income, not your growth revenue the money in your pocket. I want you to think about that because then you can build a marketing strategy and all of the bits and bobbles on how to do that. When you're strategic, you can do this and it doesn't have to cost you a fortune. You don't need $10,000 a month in a marketing budget to do this. Here's what I like to, to really tell people and, and hopefully you can see this on the screen. Please don't just throw spaghetti at the wall and hope it works. I have done that and I have spent a gazillion hours and thousands and thousands of dollars and time, like I said, the gazillion hours and working with that strategy. And it's not a great strategy. I'll just, I'll just tell you that. Okay. Um, let's see here. So when you can make the most out of that revenue, you, you really are going to have better success. So put together a marketing strategy, a marketing plan for yourself, because that's really going to work with you because then you can chunk each of those strategies and come up with a plan. Now, speaking of, we're going to go to tip number, you got to love this tip number 1.2. So funny. All right, here we go. Your social media. Social media is one of the top questions I get is, you know, how can I do better on social media? What should I post? I have no idea what I'm doing. How do I get more followers? What does it mean to have more followers? And here's what I want to just share with you. If you're just posting randomly, if you're just posting photos of your yards, it's great to still have something versus nothing, but that's not a strategy. A strategy means you're going to sit down and be intentional on what are you going to do? It's great and fun to see the yards. However, there's only so many of the same yards people want to see before they just get bored and they're going to really stop wanting to see your page, right? So you've got to put together a very strategic calendar. And what this means is you're going to sit down and go, okay, what are things I want to focus on this month? Like you've got Valentine's Day. We always have birthdays every month, right? So it would be great to come in and go, okay, you know, where's the rest of my January birthdays? Or let's go ahead and get booked up for February birthdays. You've got Valentine's Day. That's a whole other, you know, workshop we can have on its own is to what to do and not to do for Valentine's Day. Side note, don't buy inventory just for one night. 
use what you have or don't worry about offering it for just the one night. It's not worth it. Okay. Ah, yes. Okay. Here we go. I want you to be able to maximize it to your current audience. That's the thing is that you want your audience to want to see, right? So if you keep posting just photo after photo of your yards, that's great. And I would rather you do that and do it consistently. But if you can also add in some enticing content and, you know, ask them something fun. Or if you're if you're somewhere where it's snowing, ask them to, if it's snowing, ask them to you want to ask them to engage with you. Ask them to post a photo of their yard, um, something fun like that. You've got these. I don't know if y'all really have snow days, but around here, shoot, if we got, you know, a tiny bit more snow, you know, just north of here, they'll shut down some of these places because we're not equipped for it. But ask your 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 customers, your audience for photos. Um, ask them a question. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, at Christmas, it was fun. You know, are you know, is there an elf? What's their elf's name? Post some interesting photos of I know you're going to laugh, but food. People want to see this stuff and they want to see more than just yards. Now, one of the best things you can do are Facebook lives. And if you're getting new inventory in, even if you're not, these are just examples, go into and pull some inventory. If you've got a storage unit or a garage, wherever you keep your inventory, show off your inventory. Do behind the scenes videos. Don't like being in front of the camera. I detest it more than anybody else ever that I've ever known. And I sucked it up and did it anyway because my audience really loves it. They want to see what this person looks like. It's not just a faceless business. So literally get out in front of your, your people more. Know who your ideal customer is because just because somebody follows your page does not mean they are your ideal customer. And here's something that people may or may not like what I have to say. That happens a lot. When you go and have all of your business friends like your page because you want a what I call it's a vanity metric when you want, let's say, a thousand likes on your business page. It's great when you have them if it's the right people. If you go and ask in a Facebook group and go, hey, let's all follow each other. And it's all fellow business owners. They're probably not your ideal customer. And where is that going to get you? It's putting your posts in front of them. And that is not serving your business. It's not effective. It's going to make you feel good to see that number. It gives you a nice warm and fuzzy feeling to hit certain goals. You know, I got a thousand likes. I got, you know, 3000 likes. It makes you get that dopamine hit. The, oh my gosh, look at that. But then look at who all they are. And it's, I love having fellow businesses uh, see my stuff, but I want to make sure I don't get caught up in that number because I want my local audience to be my ideal customer, right? So Everybody that I'm talking to, if you are not going to potentially be a customer of my local business, it's not going to serve me well as far as, as far as a growing my business standpoint. Does that make sense? Now, let me throw this one at you. When you want to run a Facebook ad or even just boost a post, if you do it to the people who like your page, guess what? You are then paying for your business buddies to see your ad. I'm not sure. Does that make sense to everybody? So let's see. Okay, I'm going to pick on somebody. Get ready. Who am I going to pick on? Let's see. I think I'll pick on Carrie because I see Carrie's posts a lot. She does such great work. I'm going to brag on her for a second. She she's just really got it going on. Her photos are gorgeous. She posts every day and she occasionally does Facebook lives, which are a tremendous hit. But since I like her page, if she runs a Facebook ad 
specifically to the people who like her page, she will be paying for me to see her ad. And I will promote Carrie all day long when somebody asks me for yard signs in Claremont, Florida, right? But it's probably not the best and most effective way to spend your advertising dollars. So I just want to point that out. I am not an advocate of, hey, let's all go like each other's pages. And I like it because I like to see everybody. So I like that part. But don't do it for the likes and then be mindful when you're using Facebook ads who you're targeting. You can you can have all the other businesses like your pages, but just don't go and do an easy uh, boost your post, boost your ad, boost your post, excuse me, just to everybody that likes your page, because that's when you run into trouble. With that being said, Facebook ads are super, 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 super effective if you do them strategically. And Carrie, I don't know if I'm hoping you're still on here. Um, we have a Facebook ads expert as part of the Yard Card Business Network. And his name is Armando, and he is exceptional. He has provided us with so much training and masterclasses. And Carrie, if she's still on here, um, she has been one of his students. Um, everybody is that's a paid member, but I know specifically that Carrie has gone through his trainings and actually implemented. And she has had some wonderful, wonderful results to the point that she has become one of his star students where he has even called her out and shown off her stuff as, hey, look what Carrie did. This is what I'm talking about, taking these strategies and implementing them. So I just I just wanted to let you know that we have that. And it's really important that you learn from the right people. OK, next uh, oh, you know what? Before I move on, one other thing about social media. Where is your ideal customer? They may not be on Facebook. Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Twitter? Are they on Snapchat, TikTok? Just because your kids are on, an, on um, a platform does not mean that's where your ideal customer is. My ideal customer has always been on Facebook. My ideal customer used to be ladies 40 and over. And they were always on Facebook. They're still on Facebook. They have now expanded a little bit um, younger also, but they're now also on Instagram. And that's something for you to look at. Maybe all your customers are younger and they're on Snapchat. Maybe they're on TikTok. Um, just know where they are because that's important. If you don't already have a strong social, social media strategy, the, one of the most important things to do is pick your platform where most of your customers are, your ideal customers, and focus on learning and getting really, really good at that platform. Okay, so that's it. We're going to go on and then I, I'm going to try not to keep you past two o'clock. Here we go. You know what? Real quick, guys, actually, hold on. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. One second. Okay, let's see here. I am okay. I want to just make sure anybody can see me again because I just stopped sharing my screen and I want to come and just check in with y'all real quick for just a second. Okay, I let's see. Most popular upsell item. Um, Victoria, that's that's a really good question. Honestly, I added on extra signs. I've done that. I do an expanded amount of time and that has been really, really good. That's that's been really amazing. Um, I've got that. And really, I got I got to say, those are my two things. I will also do a keepsake sign for an extra charge, but that does require extra. You've got to have another sign. And then in my case, I have a vinyl cutter. I don't know if you can. Uh, you can't really see it. It's right here. But um, I've had a vinyl cutter for 19 years. But anyway, um, so I can buy an inexpensive star shape 
right? Just a blank star. And then it costs me about a dollar in vinyl. And for less than $10, I can offer an upsell. It's a keepsake sign for $25, $30, depending on what they're looking for. That does require a little bit more. Yes, Christy, exactly. So for storks, storks are a different situation. People, when it comes to new babies, people want something special to keep. And so for those of us who have, who have done storks, we have a keepsake bundle. And I wish I had, I don't have one um, in front of me or I'd show that to you. And that does require some sort of materials. Most of us, I think, have a vinyl cutter. And you can have a small vinyl cutter and some vinyl. We pop on, I do the baby's first and middle name, date of birth, weight, and length. And then I embellish it. And then the new parents get to keep it at the end of the rental. For me, that's included in the cost of the rental. So I add in that in my pricing. But the sibling signs, the big brother and the big sisters and the dogs. Yes, the dogs. Um, those are awesome. Some of the best upsells you can do because they want to, they want to include them. Um, Christy, how much do you charge for your sibling signs? I charge $20. Um, let, you want to add storks. I got to tell you, storks are, they're just super special and it's a whole, it's a whole different structure for business because you don't know when these babies are coming home. And you know what I'm going to do? Somebody remind me and request that I do go over to the business page, request that I do a stork training because um, I could spend 30 minutes just talking about that. OK, yes, exactly. The dog bones. I know uh, we could we could talk. Can you all remind me if you really want to do that? We will do a whole new baby and stork uh, training. So we will we will go into that. And Victoria, I've got some resources for you. Um, I just want to be mindful of the time and I'm going to keep going. So next up, we're going to talk about financial stuff. I know, blah, 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 right? This is the most important thing for your business. So I'm going to go back. In fact, you know what? Let me see here. I'm going to go back. Hold on one second. Okay. Are you ready? Here we go. Here we go. Maybe. I'm waiting on it to uh, start again. Okay, here we are. We are back at tip number two now, and that's your financials. Who here knows what their profit and loss statement is? Do you have a balance sheet? Uh, basically, do you know your financials? And it's okay if the answer is not really. Don't be embarrassed by it. I just want you to be honest with yourself and know where you are. Your numbers are the most important thing in your business plus legal stuff. And we can do a whole different training on that as well. Right now we're going to talk about financials. It is imperative that you have your books together. If you've already been a business owner, then you're probably a pro at this or at least know what you need to be doing, whether you're actually doing it or not. If this is your first year with owning a business, this is paramount right now. We are at January 10th, 2021. You had your end of 2020. And guess what, guys? It's tax time. It is imperative that you get your books in order. I know I keep saying imperative, but that's how important it is. With that, here's what you need to do. You need to get all of your bank statements, you need to get um, all of your credit card processing information together and you need to tally up a bunch of stuff, everything for your business. Um, with that, you know, as you're now moving forward, I think it's really a good idea. In fact, you'll you'll thank yourself later if you start taking care of it every month. You've also got taxes. Unless you live somewhere I don't know about, we all have sales tax that we need to pay either monthly, quarterly, or annually, depending on how your state has it set up. Don't ever forget to charge sales tax one way or another on your services. Yes, it's taxable. The government wants their money. You've also got your self-employment taxes, y'all. Um, depending on what your 
numbers end up being at the end of the year, you will find out real quickly if you owe self-employment tax here as soon as you do your taxes. The best thing to do moving forward is to plan on paying that, I would say quarterly, and that way you don't end up in a big oopsie, uh-oh mess this time next year. And then of course, there's also all of your reporting for your income tax. I don't know your business structure, but I would bet just about everybody is either a sole proprietor and has a DBA doing business as that's registered in their county or however your state has it worked out. I'm in Texas or you're an LLC. And most of us are probably single person LLCs. What that means is we get to use a Schedule C on our 1040 income tax. There's a bunch of different categories for you to work on. And in fact, let me, first, okay, let me start with this. There's a couple of different ways you can organize your numbers. One, you can use Excel or Google Sheet. And that is so helpful. You, you've got to put this somewhere. If you don't know how to set it up, that's okay. We actually have and my paid members, I don't know if you all are using this or another system, but my paid members have a, an actual Excel template where they were able, they're able to just plug in their information. And we also happen to have a QuickBooks, a certified QuickBooks advisor who offers a separate service. Literally, she does your books. And it's a separate service. It's not included in just our paid membership, but you have to be a member in order for her to offer you the service. But she does your QuickBooks. And so she gets you set up. Even if you want to do your own QuickBooks, she will do a basically get you set up and then you can take over from there. Or she'll just straight up, she'll do your QuickBooks. It's just, it's amazing. And I have told her that, she needs to charge double what she dub, what double what she charges. But if that's something anybody might be interested in, just let me know on that. Because right now I know she's only going to be able to take on um, a few more of our members to do their books because, well, let's face it, it's January. She also, even just separately, if you want to buy QuickBooks on your own, even if you're not a paid member, um, I think she will. She has the better price than anybody out on the Internet. And so let me know if you're interested in that. Okay, so we've got that covered. Get your snapshots, okay, y'all? Okay, and we're going to spend just a couple of minutes on time management, how to juggle it all. And this is really, it sounds so simple, but it's so true. Time management has been an issue in my life, for like all my life probably. Here's what I know is really true. I've got to ask for help. I've got to get the help. I've got to... It sounds so funny. Don't take on so much, but I've got to schedule everything. And I used to say, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. And it wasn't just a single day. It wasn't just a week. It was a chronic situation. It was always, always, always all the time. And what I learned is a lot of times, a lot of things went by the wayside. But if there was 15, I bet you, and I know this, I started looking for pockets of time. When I put it on my calendar and I said, okay, from no kidding, like 3.15 to 3.30, I'm talking itty bitty pockets of time. I would schedule in something like download my bank statements. I know that doesn't sound very sexy. Whatever that task is, I will take a task, a big task, and I will chunk it down. And then I will into micro, I call it bite-sized pieces. Um, my paid members know that we, we've been going through 2021 goal setting. And part of what we're doing with that is we start with 2020, right? And so I issued them itty bitty homework assignments like go look up your number of Facebook followers. That's a quick thing. It's so easy to go. I don't have time for any of this. But when you schedule just tiny bits of time, you can get a lot more done than if you just go, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. And that's part of it is getting overwhelmed and getting the help. If you need help with your business, we can, we can work on that. There's, that's a whole other training on its own. Also, there's, 
it's just, it's really important to not do this all alone. And something, and I'm using this as an example, is getting our QuickBooks advisor to take on your bookkeeping. That's getting help. That's just an example of something like that. And then I hate to say this, but learning how to set your boundaries, not taking on so much. I wanted to do everything and I never wanted to say no to anything because I have always been such a people pleaser and I am now a recovering people pleaser. And what I have found is it really sucked when I was initially having to just say, I don't think I can do that. Or you know what? It's not even, I don't think I can. It's no, that's not going to work. And I've gotten better about it. It's still a struggle, but it's being mindful about what you take on. So I hope that helps. Hold on one second. I am going to pop back over. Okay. Let's see if I'm here. It's so fun here. Okay. All right. Um, how has this been? Have you all liked this? Has this been valuable whatsoever? I would love to hear that from you. And what is one thing that's that you heard that would be helpful for you to have a successful 2021? And as you all start putting in some of those, because that's really important that we get to hear this. Um, let's see. I'm just going to tell you about a couple of other things people talk to me about. And, and I love it. Some of the things and tell me if you see a common theme, how to get more sales, how to get more bookings, how to advertise to make more money, um, how to earn more money to quit my full time job, how to get a better website so that I get more bookings. Um, so I want to point out, you know, basically it's various ways people I've collected information and I'm always asking people about what struggles you have. You'll, if you're ever in my world, you'll see me asking this periodically because it's important to know who's struggling with what, right? That is the common theme, right? If you hear all of those questions and challenges, it's earn more income, earn more income, earn more income. But did you hear how, you don't have to physically do a lot to earn more income, like basically cutting down, just not buying anything else or cutting your expenses. Um, and not all expenses are created equally. Let me just tell you that. Let's say um, some, some of my paid members are part of Ashley. She's our certified QuickBooks advisor. Some of my members use her service. I would absolutely tell you that is money well spent that is not an expense to cut because it's so important because that's a time savings and knowing it's done right if that's not your zone of genius find your zone of genius mine i love marketing so much i love teaching and marketing and so that goes hand in hand that's that's like that's what lights me up what lights you up if it's not bookkeeping go get somebody else to do it if it's not website design I can, I can go help you with that. You know me, I've got lots. Of, if you don't know me, I have lots of connections and we have a lot of different services and benefits over with the paid members. Um, so those are just some things. What else do we have? I talked about the accounting, social media stuff. So we've got, um, we've got a social media scheduler that I haven't told my paid members about yet. Okay. So now they're kind of finding out that I'm about to roll out. It's, it's a service that's going to be a game changer. Um, let's see what else. Okay. So I'm going to go back and re preparing to start this year. We need to figure out a lot. Yes. There's, there's a lot, there's always a lot to figure out, but don't get stuck in. There's a lot to figure out. Think of one thing and start writing it down. Um, let's see, Christy, a good reminder that time blocking, even small amounts of time is helpful. It really is. When I get overwhelmed that I get this, and I'll call it analysis paralysis. Can anybody relate to that? Where there's so much to do. And so I don't do anything, right? So what I do, I, this works for me. It may not work for you. Is I take out literally, okay. Yes, I have a cute notebook. You can do this. Let's see. 
Can you see that? Any of my friends that know me? Yes, flamingos are part of my life. I have my notebook. I take out my notebook. And in no particular order, I literally, I just start writing out everything and I do a brain dump. It's not pretty. It's literally just getting it. If you'll take, schedule it, 30 minutes. And you write down every single thing that comes out. Not a particular order. Nothing pretty. Chicken scratch, I call it. Write it out. Open up the Google Doc, whichever works for you. Write it out. You are going to feel so much better. And then you can look at that list. And if you're one of my paid members, you know, I'll come and help you organize where to start because what you need to do then is prioritize it because just doing the busy work going, okay, well, I posted a photo on social media last Friday and that's great, but we, we can work on some strategies. Any action is better than no action, right? So I want you to just remember that. And I think that's, I think that's it. Um, I'm sorry, I keep saying um and all that. That's like I said, I'm a little awkward. And as the time goes by, I get even more awkward. It's just something that happens. So, okay. One thing that I was not going to mention, but this is kind of how I am. It's really hard for me to keep a secret. <laughs> We're about to start promoting the membership into the Yard Card Business Network. We have not really been promoting it. In fact, we haven't promoted it anywhere except within my bubble, right? And y'all know who you are if you're in my bubble, right? And so we have had a great 2020 getting that up off the ground. My founding members, I am just so blessed to have them. But we're getting ready to promote and open it up to all of the other wonderful yard card business owners who are looking to have a more successful 2021 and up level their business straight up. So it's going to be opening it. It's going to be by invitation only. I have to tell you that because we want to make sure that we're a good fit for each other. Uh, there's all kinds of different personalities and in this day and age, I just think it's better for everybody to make sure it's a good fit. If I'm somebody that you're like, mm, I don't really like how you do things, then I don't want you to be unsatisfied with how we have the membership, right? So we are opening it up and starting going to start promoting it soon. And the bonus for our new members is going to be a live Facebook ads workshop with our amazing Facebook ads expert, Armando. And he's not just a Facebook ads expert. He specializes in local businesses, not just you're out on the internet. He taught, he's about anybody that has a local business. That's what he specializes in, if that makes sense. So that's a huge, huge, huge bonus. And my paid members already know how great that is. Uh, you, you've received that in the past and we have what, three, I think three trainings. And he has also agreed to do a second bonus, which is going to be a live Q&A where we'll all hop on Zoom and you can ask him anything about Facebook ads. Literally, that means, and we, we did this back in October with, with some members, you showed up with your ad and your analytics and said, what do I need to do? And he helps tweak it. He will look at it. He'll explain it to you. He walks you through Here's how to set up your your Facebook ads, literally, um, and the difference between an ad and boosting a post. Why do one versus the other and all kinds of different features. And I'm talking from open up your window on your laptop. Now go to here. I mean, he does step by step and he's just he has got a servant's heart and he is not making like some money off of every one of our little businesses, y'all, his clients have like $10,000 a month Facebook ads budgets. So we're, he's not here to try to, you know, hopefully get, you know, two new customers that, you know, can pay 50 bucks a month each. No, no, this is because he and I are friends and, and he, again, he has a servant's heart and he 
see so much opportunity for us and for our business. And he just wants to help. So that's going to be the bonuses. And I guess the cat's out of the bag, but that's okay. All right. I'm going to let y'all go. And oh, I shouldn't have said that because I have one bonus of my own for you right now. Would you like, um, we have, okay, let me just say this. We have an IRS budget categories expense cheat sheet. Basically, all of the expenses for your business need to go in certain categories, right? You've got advertising, you've got office supplies, you've got inventory, you've got um, everything goes into a bucket, basically a category. If you need help with what all those categories are, we have a cheat sheet for that. And my paid members already have this, but I wanted to go ahead and offer this. Um, our QuickBooks advisor, Ashley, and myself have put this together and it is it is phenomenal. And it's one of, I wish I would have had this resource starting out. So if you would like that freebie, would you please do me a favor and private message me here in on the business page. There should be somewhere around here, there is a message button, a private message button. And I don't have it all set up fancy because I don't have my marketing intern here. She always sets stuff up fancy where you can just click a button. But if you can do that, I can, I can get you going in the right direction to get that free cheat sheet. So, all right. I want to thank you all so much for being here. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it, especially on a Sunday afternoon. And if you would like to hear more from me, be sure to follow our page and not only like it, but set it to where it's it's a page that you get to see more often. And you can do that over in your notification settings because this is the best place for me to get to you. Oh, and the other thing is if you are not on our mailing list, um, that's a really, really, really good way to get notified of trainings like this. And also when we have various freebies, that's going to be one of the first places we're going to do it. I actually don't do Facebook lives very often over here. I do them for our paid members, but I don't do them as much here on the, on the free Facebook page. So let me know if you want the link to sign up for the, for the newsletter, for the email list as well because that's super important to be able to do. All right. I will let you all go. Thank y'all so much again for coming. And my paid members, y'all are so sweet to come over here and learn even more. Y'all are just the best. So I really appreciate it. And everybody else have a great day and be sure to come back here. Let me know one of your takeaways, just make a post over here on the business page. And as you, as you go through this, even take a photo. If you took notes, Send me a send me a snapshot of that. I want to see. I want to see. All right, y'all have a wonderful day. Have a very blessed day, and I will see you soon. Cheers, everybody. Bye bye.